Come on, praise him like you know him. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, man. Uh, when you guys get that revelation, how beautiful it is to worship God, how to honor God, serious, man, it, it'll just make you happy. It'll make you glad, just worshiping God, honoring God. If you're ever in a funk, if you're ever uh, uh, out of character, just worship God. Even right now, you know, sometimes when you don't feel like praising God, you don't feel like worshiping God, uh, uh you got to just break through all that stuff. You got to come through all that, right? Amen. Welcome everyone there on to uh, YouTube, on uh, Facebook. Welcome, welcome, family. Welcome, Turning Point Fellowship, everyone in the house. Amen. The house of God. Hallelujah. I just want to read this to you guys real quick. Uh, Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 41.10. She says, who's that guy? <laughs> it's, it, uh, let me read it to you guys. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. I, I, I underlined it that on 310.15. March 10th, 2015, that's nine years ago, over nine years ago, uh, when God was speaking to me. And today when I was speaking to him and he spoke to me, 4110, I'm like, hmm. So I said, wow, we. And this is what I got of it. <clears throat> when God is near, when God is near, you'll lose your fear. Just like the enemy, right? When the enemy's near, you know, you know when, when you're walking in fear, Who's around? The enemy. He operates in fear. But when, when God's around, we, we should operate in confidence, right, And who we are in Christ. Amen? So when God is near, you'll lose your fear, and in its place, he will give you confidence, courage, and a freedom. That word right there, dismayed, it says dismayed. I, <clears throat> I looked it up. It means uh, to be disheartened. Or to be deprived of courage. To be dismayed. It's an old word. It says it's an old word that was from the old English uh, vocabulary back in those days. Three things happen when we learn to put our trust in the Lord. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to help you. And he's going to uphold you. That means he's going to hold you up when you're feeling all weak and all out of it. I can't say the word I want to say. Discomfort, bore it. What's it called? This. Thank you. There. <clears throat> I couldn't say it even away. <clears throat> Excuse me. Psalms forty six one. God is our refuge, our strength, a very present in help of trouble. That's who God is. So we got to learn how to depend on God. We got to learn how to trust in God. Amen. Lay all our weights upon Him. All our anxieties. All that stuff. You got to just. You know what? I'm not going to be concerned about that. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm giving it to you. Father, you go ahead and do whatever you have to do with it. And I know you're going to do well by me in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what we have to do. So let's praise the Lord. <laughs> go ahead and have a seat. We're going to do our, uh, uh, oh, I'm going to pray. You can sit down or, or stand up either way. Father, we bless you. We thank you for our lives and our salvation. Father, I want to say thank you for the souls that were one today, Lord God. I thank you for the gospel being preached in the ears, Father, of those that have not heard about you, Father. They heard your name, but they didn't know you, Lord. So we thank you. We bless you. I thank you for everyone here that sits here under the word of God. As they hear the word that faith comes, and faith comes by hearing the word of God, Lord. So I ask that you bless everyone here, Father, everyone on, on, uh, media, on the media, Lord, Facebook and YouTube. I ask that you would bless them, Father, richly, Lord. They would not just be an ordinary Thursday Bible study, Lord. That you would move, Father, in the supernatural. In the supernatural upon, 
upon our lives, upon our minds, upon our emotions, upon our faith. Father, move us to places we've never been before, to levels, Father, we never, Father, reached before, Lord God. So I thank you and I bless you for the healing, Father, for the deliverance. Thank you, Father, for the restoration and reconciliation, Lord. I thank you, Father, that we can say we are the redeemed. We are the redeemed, that the blood of Christ has redeemed us from our sins. The price has been paid. The precious blood of Christ was paid to redeem us from all our past, all our bad habits, all our hang-ups, Lord God, are gone right now, Lord, by faith. And we begin to walk in the newness of who you are in our lives. Father, I thank you for the children that are here, Lord, and the children that are watching us through the media, Lord, that they will be blessed as they hear the word. I thank you for every person that is out there, Lord, that through these uh, sound, whatever they're called, these sound things, Lord God, that they would, Father, hear and receive the newness of their life and the healing of their bodies, Lord God, and of their minds and their emotions, Lord. I thank you, Father, that the goodness and the mercy, your goodness and mercy, follow us all the days of our lives. I pray that we would recognize that, Lord. When we walk, Father, in the highways and the byways, that we look behind us, Father, we look to the side and we say, that's the goodness and the mercy of God that has followed me all the days of my life. Father, I thank you for Pastor Diego, as he gives the word to the, to the word today, Father, that he'll speak it, Father, clearly in a sound mind, Father, operating in faith, the faith that he has in you, the trust, the confidence that he has in you in your word, Lord God. I pray today, Father, he'll prophesy. He'll give a word of knowledge, Lord God. I pray that, Father, right now. Lord, I just thank you for every minister here, Lord, for our worship team that is here, Lord. As we worship you, we honor you. We do it out of our hearts, Lord, out of the love that we have for you and no other, Lord God. We worship you. So we bless you. We thank you, Father, for the good work that you've begun in every one of us, Lord. That we're confident of this very thing, that you're going to finish it, Father. Finish this work that you've begun in us until the day of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Is our worship team up there? Amen. They're ready to write. Yeah, I didn't look back. Amen. We're not to be looking back no more, right? Amen. We're looking forward. All right. Go at it. Go at it in Jesus' name. Never been, you've never been defeated.
to him who came to earth, to him who came to earth and died. Be all the blessings, all the honor. To him who rose and is alive. Be all the glory, all the power. To him who broke the chains of sin. Be all the blessings, all the honor. To him who's coming back again. Who turned the water into wine? Him who turned the water into wine. Be all the blessing, all the honor. To him who gave sight to the blind. Be all the glory, all the honor. To him who can heal today. Be all the blessing, all the honor. Yes, today.
thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, Lord God. Your presence that we get to enter into, Lord God, where there's rest, there's healing, there's restoration, reconciliation, Lord God. All things are here available to us. You make this place available to us, Lord. Not only just here on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, but woo, on a Thursday, those nights too, Lord. But tonight on a Thursday night, that's right, because some of us are here on Tuesdays, Lord God. Wherever you are at any time, you could stop and get into God's presence. You could remove yourself from wherever you're at and just sit. You can take that time. Close your eyes. That's why the, the Jewish people had to prayer shawls. They would cover themselves. They would hide themselves. So don't, it doesn't matter what people saw. They, they needed to get with God. They needed to touch. They needed to touch. They needed to talk to. They needed to know, Lord, that you are there and you are real. And we know you are real, Lord, because of all the miraculous things you've done in our lives. We can look back and see the marvelous things you've done, Lord God. And we look forward to the great things you're going to continue to do in our lives, Lord God, if in our individual lives and in Turning Point's life, Lord God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord God. Yes. Yep. You can easily make your way back to your seats and sit and just rest. God is in control. God is in control. Yes, amen. God's in control. No matter what we see, no matter what goes on, God's still on the throne. It doesn't matter what's happening, what doctors report, or whatever else you got. It doesn't matter. God is in control. So I have the opportunity to do ties tonight. And a big worship team. Malachi 3.10. Pastor Joe, he's around tonight. I got to tell him he's probably listening, but you see, I don't have anything here like without tonight because this is something that's in my heart. So it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. This is a storehouse, right? That there may be food in my house and try me. Now in this, says the Lord, test me. Where else does he say test me? He doesn't say test me anywhere else, right? It's the only place he says, test me. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing there, that there will not be room enough to receive it. So as we tithe, as we give, God opens up the windows and he pours out onto us. So this verse here struck me today. I had a little procedure the other day. And uh, fear not was one of our words. Pastor Angel said something this morning, fear not. And a couple of our songs all had something to go along with it. So I have to, I had to get a, uh, as you get older on in life, some things don't work as well as they used to, right? So it's, it's supposedly it's a normal surgery, they claim. So my, my veins, arteries are the stuff that carries the blood away. Veins are the ones that carry them back up, okay? Is that right, sister? You know. All right. I'm not a doctor. I am a doctor, though. I have a white coat, so I can diagnose pretty much anything. Ask Bobby. She'll tell you, right? So so the doctor is telling me, he goes, oh, yeah, the valves are no good, and that's why your legs are swelling and pain and stuff like that. Yeah, right. So it's like, oh, okay. No big deal. We just go in there, and we find what vein it is, and we blank it off. We hold it, and we inject this. Foam, I want to pay like Insta foam, you know, like Home Depot foam, right? No, seriously, right. And he says, and we just close it off. And I go, well, where does that blood go? I mean, what, what happens there? He goes, oh, oh, well, it just bypasses and goes to your deeper inner veins, what they call the deep veins. And I said, so I want to test them, having some fun with them. So I so, so you mean God made me with spare parts? Is that what you're telling me? He goes, well, well, not, well, yeah, kind of, yeah, kind of, yeah, no, but this is what we know it works. So this is a guy who's not even saved, right? So that's where I was checking at, going that way. 
But he knows that our God can make a way. So he can make a way. He just made another vein. He just moved it over and, and forces it all into what they call the deep veins. So my question to you guys tonight would be then, what veins do you need to cut off or stop so that you can tithe? Well, that's what it says, right? Huh? No, I ain't laughing. <laughs> but that's what it is, right? I mean, it's something we got going extra, right? It seemed like it was extra. It wasn't doing me any good. It was causing inflammation and things like that. So it was no good, so he cut it off. And this is a non-believer that knew this principle worked. So if he knew it worked, and we know God's word, and we know what it says to do, so what, are we, what do we need to cut off in that department so that we can fully tithe unto God and get blessed by him? Let him pour out those windows of heaven, right? Okay, where are my kids? You ready? All right, we can tithe. You tithe, yeah, you can. You can tithe, and you could text this number, text the word give to this number, and the number is 714-477-7736. One more time. 714-477-7736. And now the ushers are going to go out. These handsome married men are going to give out... If you need an envelope, please raise your hand. Don't get mad at me. I just use what God gives me, right? But it's true, right? He made a way. God made a way. He can make a way. If you sacrifice whatever it needs to be or cut off, it might be cut off, do away with, God will say, aha, now I can pour out into you. Now I can do this. And it's not only in money either. That's in blessings in life. In your family, your kids. Where's my kid? There's a kid up there. Up there, the other ones, your loved ones, all the kids out there, family members, grandchildren for us. Uh, you, you can scan the QR code too. And as Sister Sandra would say, you can make it a reoccurring gift or you can do a one time gift to make sure you get it right. And with that, worship team. And at Turning Point, we don't take. Your tithes, you get to bring them to the storehouse of the Lord. Amen. So bring them on up when you're ready. Pray over your offering and bring them up in Jesus' name.
hold my bride's hand, okay? Put your hand on that bucket, Bobby. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to pour back into this house, Lord God, into this ministry, Lord God. We ask you to bless it, Heavenly Father, Lord God. Like I said before, we want to see lives changed, restoration, reconciliation be made new, Lord God, restored, Heavenly Father. Lord, use these offerings to, to reach the world, the lost out here, Heavenly Father. Let it have an impact on our community, Lord God. That's what we're to be, Lord. We want to be that lighthouse, Heavenly Father. We want to be the hospital, Lord God. Lord, and bless these tithes and offerings to do that, Lord God, to keep the lights on, this beautiful air conditioned and comfortable, Lord God. We thank you for that, Heavenly Father. We don't take it lightly, Lord, because there are a lot of places that don't have these comforts that we have, Lord God. So we do thank you, Heavenly Father, for this great land that we live in, Lord God. Bless the United States of America, Lord God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord God, for this place. And just bless his tithes and offerings, the ones who need to be challenged in those areas, Lord God. Speak to their hearts, Heavenly Father, Lord God. We just thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We can release the worship team, I believe, right? Correct? And are we having the... Are they you staying in tonight, or are they going out tonight? The youth are vamanosan. Yep, all the children. Okay, kids, before you go, whoa, 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 whoa. I see you trying to get off. Like Pastor says, applaud these children. Celebrate these children right now. They're the next doctors, lawyers, carpenters, plumbers, electricians, ship captains, harbor pilots, Attorneys, pipe fitters, moving people. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh. And at this time, Pastor Angel or. Oh, yeah, I know he's up. You want to introduce him? Yeah, yeah. You want to go ahead? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Right on. He's one of ours right here, man. You know, uh, even though we released him, we didn't let him go all the way just so long. You know what I mean? He's one of ours. We love him, man. Let's give Pastor Diego a good round of applause. Amen. Right on. Praise be to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Check, check. There I am. Here you go. Amen. Uh, do we want to do the thing? Or? <laughs> okay. Put it on the screen because I don't know it. <laughs> All right. If you will, grab your Bibles. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess, I boldly confess. My, mind my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, heart is receptive. I, will I will never be the same. I'm about to receive, about to receive. The, incorruptible, the incorruptible, the indestructible, the indestructible. every living seed every of, the word of, of the word of God. I will never be the same, be the same. I don't want to be the same, be in, Jesus name. in Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Go ahead, stay standing real quick, huh? stay standing. I know we're so quick to sit down. Say, I'm about to receive, about to receive a, timely a timely word. Say it again. I'm about to receive, about to receive a, timely a timely word. You may be seated. Amen and amen. So, first of all, I want to say thank you to the men of Turning Point that came to help, specifically Fred Mancina, Eric Gonzalez, Pastor Angel himself. They helped us move out of our church uh, last week, and it was amazing because they basically did all the work and made it effortless for us. It was super nice. And uh, again, Eric Gonzalez, he came on, uh, I think, last yesterday, and he just knocked down a whole wall with my brother, and he did a whole bunch of stuff. 
So give them, give him a round of applause. I mean, I don't know where he's at, but he did amazing. And, and truly, as a church working together, that's, that's what it's all about. It's brothers and sisters taking care of each other. And it was just a blessing, so I want to make sure that they receive the credit. Um, now we're going to get into the word. So there's a ministry that you guys probably all served that you didn't even know that you served in. And I, I bet you no one's going to guess it, but I'll give you the answer. It's the ministry of convenience. The ministry of, I mean, some of you guys could be the leaders of that. So I, me included. So I'm right there with you. Don't think I'm picking on anyone. But the ministry of the convenience is the title of the message today. So we're going to go there today. So it's going to sting a little bit. 45 minutes, praise God, we're going to be going tonight. So, I don't know if you know this, we live a pretty good life here in Western civilization, beautiful America, Southern California of all places. Perfect weather, beaches, beautiful homes, you name it, we got it. But if you look at where mankind is going, we're constantly pursuing innovation better, bigger, faster, more, all of it. We're in this rise. And you have to understand that this has only happened in the last 200 years. Yep. Last 200 years. Jesus was around 2,000 years ago, and mankind was even there uh, around before then, 6,000 years. And in the last 200 years is this crazy climb of planes, trains, uh, electricity, all that we have at our disposal, internet, our phones. I mean, these little things that we have are just amazing. You can figure out anything you want in a split second. All right there. But now what happens when you take all that stuff away? There's going to be chaos. I don't know if you remember in like 20, I think it was either 2023 or 2022 when Texas had a winter storm, and they were out of power for about a couple, a month almost, I think. And it was cold, so you have no heat. So people are suffering. I mean, this is very real things that were happening. And in our own lives, think of all the things that just make our life easier, right? All the conveniences that we have. Starbucks at every corner, fast food like that. You can go to urgent cares everywhere. Oh, I got to go to the doctor. Everything that we have at our disposal, just right there. But what about the believer? Is that good for the believer? Convenience. Because these are some things that we're going to talk about today. And I'm here to break it to you. But being a believer, being a follower of Christ is not convenient. It was never meant to be. And this is a rude awakening for, I want to say, the mega churches specifically. Because imagine the convenience of a believer being able to go to a church do their one hour, say hi, bye, and go about their life. No growth, no development, no discipleship, no nothing. Or even better, I'll do you one better. Stay at home, watch it online. Stay at home, stay on your couch, do whatever you're going to do. You don't really have to listen to the word, but oh, I, was, I was listening. I had it on the computer, I had it on the TV, I was viewing it. Okay, what else? What else can we do? We have uh, multiple types of churches. Whatever you want. You want the church that is in and out in an hour. You want the church that goes for two hours. You want the, the black church. You want the white church. You want the church that dances a lot. You want the church that's quiet. Pick your flavor, like Baskin Robbins. Pick your flavor. We got 31,000 different flavors of churches. So we've made this culture so, con so all about convenience, and that's what we press. That is what is just the, the forefront of all that we do. Everything is meant to be easy. I'll give you the, defini the definition real quick. Uh, convenience, the quality of being useful, easy, or suitable for something, a thing that contributes to an easy and effortless way of life. I mean, I could tell you, I could stay up here for hours and hours and hours about how 
it has not been convenient being a Christian, being a believer. I'm sure we all could be. So we'll go to our first scripture. Go to Matthew 7. Sorry, I didn't give you the. Matthew 7, 12, uh, 12 through 14. And this will be from the English Standard Version. And we'll look at our first scripture. When you're a believer, it just, it never ceases to, to stop that you follow God at any point, right? I remember a time where I was uh, going for a run. That was a while ago, I know, trust me. Uh, I was going to run, and I was running around the park, and there was a guy, he was walking with a crutch, and he had obviously a cast around his knee. And I went around him three times, and each time it was the Lord saying, pray for him. And then the second time, pray for him. The third time, pray for him. And it was that feeling in your bones where you're like, oh, my God, why do I have to do this right now? I don't know this person. Probably doesn't want to be bothered. I don't want to bother him. It's that, it's that split-second decision where you're like, I could just walk away. No one would know. But you know, and God knows. So I prayed for him, and his name was David. I was like, that's a great name. Uh, I was like, look. Whatever God wants to do here today, if he wants to rectify that, he, shat, he fell uh, down a couple stairs and he shattered his knee, basically. And I was like, if God wants to just supernaturally bind it right now and all the bones come together, then that's according to your faith. If nothing happens, then let's just pray anyways. And he's like, okay. And so we prayed. Nothing happened. And then I was like, all right, well, I hope to see you again. And then I went about my run. And then I still saw him walking around a couple more times. But the point was, it's going to inconvenience you to serve God. It has to. Because otherwise, how would your faith grow? How can you begin to trust a God who you've never seen, who you've never probably heard the audible voice of God? It's a tough thing to do. So if you're there in Matthew 7, 12 through 14, verse 12, so whatever you wish the others would do to you, do also to them for their For this is the law and the prophets. Verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter it by are many. 14. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. It's true, right? Following. And so I'm just going to give you the key points. The key point for this one is. Serving God is not convenient, otherwise everyone would do it. Right? Is it not very true? I mean, if if it was as easy as one, two, three, go to heaven, do whatever you want, I'm pretty sure everyone would do it. Because it's the best sales pitch, right? Hey, you're going to get to go to heaven, you'll never die, which 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 is what mankind has always been after. No death. I never have to feel that. Cool. Never feel death, and you get to do whatever you want. That's perfect. That's paradise. Sign me up, right? Where do I sign? And that's exactly what life would be like if we didn't have this gospel, if we didn't know of Christ. We just do whatever we want. Some of us still do whatever we want, even now, believing in Christ. And that's the whole point. That's what I want to bring to stir up in your spirit, because... Even now, as a believer and serving after 14 years or something like that, uh, I I promise you, I didn't find more problems, more temptations, more stress, more inconvenience than after I said, yes, Lord, I'm here. The minute I gave my life to Christ, because it's one thing, you were outside of, of God's will, right? So you believed whatever you wanted, you did whatever you wanted. You weren't accountable. It didn't mean anything. You could do as you do. But now that we know the truth, and that's the whole point, is because we know we're accountable. We serve a God that lives within us daily. And so he knows our thoughts, our actions, our motivations. And so it's imperative to us to constantly be in prayer, constantly be in our word, constantly let him inconvenience us. And so serving God is just is one of those things that it is not convenient. And it's almost like 
well, why didn't anyone tell me this before I, you know, I became a believer? But I'm telling you now, it's, it's the greatest inconvenience, but also the greatest blessing, the greatest thing that you could ever do with your life because you will never face that death. You will never feel that sting. You get to be in eternity with, the, with our Father, and you get to live this life, and you get to live in the fullness of what he's created. You still get blessed. You will still see good things happen. Of course it's going to be rough. Of course it's going to be tough. But that's what I'm saying about the scripture. Uh, that's what he's trying to say, rather. Jesus, the, if it was, you know, the gates open wide, everyone can just run to it. But narrow is the path for us. And it is hard, but in it we find life. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the next scripture, Matthew 24. And we're going to do verses 3 through 14. English Standard Version, Matthew 24, 3 through 14. And this is, uh, of course, Jesus speaking to the disciples. They ask him, what are the signs of the end of the age? What is to come? And, and they want to know what, what will be. And I just want to share a quick story. There's uh, my cousin uh, on my mom's side, she just gave her life to Christ uh, on Sunday. So heaven gained another soul. She got baptized. And I was, I, ne I didn't know about this. I was like, oh my God, I didn't know that you were walking this path. And it, it surprised me and it was a blessing. And, and that's why I'm like, oh man, do you know what you signed up for? You know, it's like, I know that they told her like, this is why we pray. This is why we pray this prayer. This is why we get baptized in the water. Uh, this is what's to come as a believer. But do they really go into like, hey, you're going to face probably more problems than you've ever faced. And your faith will be tested because it has to be. Because now you are a child of God. You have a target on your back. It's, it's just what's going to be. And there's no other way around it. And so now let's look at this, the signs of the end of the age. Uh, verse 3. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when all these things will be and what will be the sign of, the, of your coming and the end of the age. Verse 4, and Jesus answered them, see that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and they will lead many astray. Verse 6, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. So that's like stage one, okay? Those are the beginning parts. Verse 7, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various, place, in various places. Uh, these, all these things uh, are but the beginning of birth pains. Verse 9, then they will deliver you up to tribulation, and put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations for my namesake. And that's the key statement right there, for my namesake. If you are serving Jesus, if you believe in him, if you have given your life to him, and your purpose now is to live this called, set-apart life for Jesus, you will be hated for his namesake. And this is Jesus telling his disciples and we are what? His disciples. Let's continue on. Verse 10. And then many will fall away and, believe, and betray one another and hate one another. Uh, I've gone over this before, right? Well, betray one another. Who's, who's betraying who? Man, the, the world's betraying Christians? No. Christians betraying Christians. Brothers against brothers. Verse 10 again. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will rise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will pro be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So all those things have to happen. And you know how I know the tribulation hasn't happened? Because we're still here. Because it's going to be the greatest tribulation that we've never seen. And so 
if you read your history, we haven't seen, there's been the Holocaust, there's been uh, many genocides, there's been a lot of wars, rumors of wars, we've had earthquakes, we've had famines in some nations. So those are still yet the beginning, right? That's still the early stages. And I bring this up to, uh, for us because of the convenience, right? We live in this place of now, and I got food, I'm thinking about where I'm going to eat, I got Korean, I got Asian, I got Mexican, I can do whatever. All these options, just the convenience at our disposal is so amazing. But not for us. It's not meant to be for us because it's going to condition us to live a, a different lifestyle that we're not really meant to be. Because when we're talking about these end times, we're, we might not have this glorious building with all the air conditioning, with all these comfortable seats, with this wonderful sound system. Uh, and the reason I thought of this is when we, uh, we had our first service and we were in like a little, I mean, it was probably 12 by 12 room, and we put about 25 people in there. And I was like, wow, this is almost like, it was like a revelation because that's what it's going to be like in those, in those times. Because if, if nation hates you for your namesake and they will put you to death, that means they're willing to shut you down just like they did with COVID. And then we're going to go to this place where People are falling away. Why? Because they never had the faith. It's easy. We made Christianity convenient. So it's so easy to walk away. They're going to go up to you and be like, hey, you believe in Jesus Christ? And then you're going to have to say yes or no because they're going to kill you. That might happen. And I know that's scary and it's not meant to be like, hey, this is your time to back out. Sorry. No, it's not. It's your time to go all in, to press forward because we have a hope. We have a future. Death has lost its sting. It has no hold over you. That is why you should not fear about sharing the gospel to someone. You should not fear when you're in the stores, when you're in a restaurant, wherever you are. You should not be afraid to share the gospel. And so as we were worshiping in that little room, I was like, well, this is my, what it might look like. Who's going to be there? Because I know we have prayer Tuesday night, right? And who shows up? Six, eight people? And those are the critical times because, again, it's a Tuesday night. You might have plans. You might have this. It's going to inconvenience you. It doesn't fit in our schedule. But we're not on our time because it is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. We serve him. We have to do what we have to do to make that important thing in our life, which is our whole purpose, and put that before everything. It's hard, family. It's okay. It's hard. I know it is. I live it every day, and you live it every day, and we go through it every day. But thank God, because that means we're still here. We still have a purpose. That means our, our goal, our mission, our purpose is not over yet. Go to Philippians 4, verse 11 through 13, New King James Version. Philippians 4, verse 11 through 13, New King James Version. God is good, Emily. He's good. He's sovereign. He's just. We're going to get through it. We're going to be all right. I don't want to, like, bring the room down, you know. Be encouraged. This is all meant to be an encouragement and to stir you up and to get out of that complacency. To find yourself, hey, I can do this. I need to do this. Because the time is drawing near where these conveniences are going to be gone. And you're going to have to step your faith up like no other. Philippians 4.11. Not that I speak in regards to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Verse 12. I know how to be abased and I know how to be abound. I know how to abound everywhere, um, everywhere and to all things I have learned, both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to, be suffer, and to suffer need. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. The reason Paul wrote this to the Philippian church is because he was asking for um, for more uh, of, need, of need, right? Because he said right there in verse 11, not that I speak in regard to need, 
because he was asking for money. It's not that he needed, but the whole point of it is he knows how to be in, in, in the fullness of it and in the lack of it. And I know we get this scripture twisted a lot. You know, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That means I can fly. I can, you know, I can do all these things. I can lift a 3,000-pound car. It's, that's not what it's for. It means that when you're in that position, in that state of I'm, I'm in lack, I can do all things. I have everything that I need of. I got a yacht, a boat. I got my mansion. I have my cattle on a thousand hills. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. All the glory goes to Christ Jesus. And we can do what we need to do because of him. And it's not because of what we have, what we lack. None of that matters. If you have Christ Jesus, then you will abound in much. Amen? Amen. And now I'm going to take a sort of on a different route. So how many know the the cardinal sins or the seven deadly sins, right? Well, here's a hint. All sin is deadly. <laughs> so this is just something that was introduced in the 6th century by a, a pope. I can't remember the name. John Henry, I think. And, and they go over, I'll go over the seven specific ones. And, and really, I'm, I, I looked at it. I was like, wow, okay, I can see how convenience just flows in each one of those. So let's, let's start with the first one, pride. Pride, when we're walking in convenience, pride won't let us be wrong. It won't let us see our faults, blaming others, always running from our problems rather than face them. Uh, Go to John 3.20 real quick. I think I have it here. John 3.20, up there. You don't have to go to it in your Bibles. And this is what it says, John 3.20, real quick. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest, it be, lest its deeds be, uh, should be exposed. Verse 21, but he who, does the truth, uh, he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds will be, truly, or will be clearly seen that they, sh- uh, they have been done in God. So the convenience, right, when we're walking in pride, it's convenient not to apologize. It's convenient not to forgive. It's, it's convenient to run from your problems when people are trying to tell you, hey, you have something in your teeth, and you won't even listen. It's convenient. And that's, that's a bad quality. That's a bad trait. It's walking in sin because pride is, is masking all that stuff. It's a bad quality. And we, so we walk in this pride for our own convenience, because we don't want to deal with the problem. Yeah, I know I have a temper problem. I'll deal with it later. Yeah, I know I'm late to all these places. I'll deal with it later. Yeah, I know I have a foul mouth. I'll deal with it later. Yeah, I know I do. And the list goes on. Greed causes... uh, Causes us to only look at ourselves or look, for, look out for ourselves, not sharing, not willing to give. When we're walking in convenience in the, in the form of greed, we don't want to give out. We don't want to do more than what we need to. If they ask for 20, I give them 20, even though you know you could have given them 40. Walking in convenience, because we think that $20 is going to mean more to us, Right? How many times have we, yeah, I mean, amen, because that should be everyone. Greed will just lock that wallet up tight, and we won't step out in faith knowing that, hey, this can be a blessing to someone today. This can change their whole life right now. But because of greed, you walk in that convenience, you don't lift your hand, and you keep that wallet right there. Lust. Lust. Okay, so... Remember, it's typically described in the form of a sexual desire, but really it can go into many more categories. When you're walking in the convenience of lust, you're only after your own desires regardless of, what it, of who it affects. Perfect example, King David and Bathsheba. He saw what he wanted. 
and he got what he wanted. And who did it affect? Uriah, because he sent him out to the front line, got him killed. Okay, problem solved. How convenient for King David. But yet he was the man after God's own heart, right? Envy, it can lead us to taking, it can lead us to theft, right? It will take things that don't belong to us because we want it more. I want it more. So when we see that jacket, oh, whose jacket? No one got it? Mine now. Because it was right there. It was convenient. The keys were right in the car, officer, I swear. It was convenient. It was too easy. I'm going to share a story. When I was, oh, my God, I was, uh, I was like a young kid. I think it was 10, maybe 9, 11, something like that. I was at a park, and this is at the time when cell phones were, like, really early. It was, like, the old, I mean, the screen was, like, one by one inch, and that was, like, the top, top shelf stuff. And I don't even remember what I was doing. I was walking around. There was a guy who was playing basketball, and I saw a phone. And so... I mean, like, like that, I reacted, and I put a leaf over it, and I walked away. And I saw the guys scrambling, looking for that phone for like an hour, and I waited. As soon as they left, I, and then I walked away, and I started playing, because I wanted the games on the phone. I stole someone's phone. <laughs> That's crazy. Me, Diego, this guy, I stole it. I, I planned it. I, you know, I manipulated the situation, and I just let it do it because it was convenient. Just because I could, because I wanted it. And I never even thought about who it would affect. Never cared. You just do it. And that's why, I mean... It is. Envy is a, is a terrible thing because it leads us to doing things that are wild. I mean, I can go to countless examples. Uh, Cain and Abel, right? He was envious of his brother getting the, the blessing that God was like, yes, this is what I want. And sin was crouching at the door, just like the same situation that I went through. And it's a very slippery slope. Gluttony. Overindulging ourselves with all the food that is at our disposal rather than eating for sustenance. I don't want to go too crazy on this one, but we know how we are. The food's all out. All you need is just a little, a little bit of everything, and you should be good. But what do we do? I'll get seconds. I'll get thirds. Did you get a plate already? Okay, cool. I'm gone. We get more. Okay, can I take this home? Okay, cool. And then what do you do? You throw it away when you get home because you never ate it. It sat in the fridge for three days. I'm telling you, rather than in your heart purposing like, hey, maybe I could just bag this food up, and if I see someone, I'll give it to them. I'll leave that one there. <clears throat> Wrath. Easier to be angry and mad at the world, at people, the system, than to make changes or forgive and move on and letting it go. When we walk in the convenience of wrath, you just, you're like, a, like a, a train. You bulldoze whatever's in your way, saying whatever you want to say, hurting whoever you want to hurt, and you feel justified because the wrath within you is it's saying you're justified for doing all the way, all your behaviors the way you want to act. Again, disregarding those around you causing pain, causing hurt, sloth, always looking for the easy way out, the path of least resistance, expecting always to be taken care of. I mean, we can think of several people, right? We're like, oh, they never do nothing. And they're always getting everything. Because that laziness in us is like, well, I'll just do the same. If they didn't have to do anything, I don't want to do anything. If they did 20%, then I'm going to do 20%. If they did 40%, I'll do 40%. That convenience of being lazy, right, to not wanting to do anything is probably the number one thing that destroys us as a society because 
We live sedentary lifestyles and we don't move. Object in motion stays in motion. If you go evangelize once, you'll do it again and you'll do it again and you'll do it again because you'll see God's goodness in that. Even if it's just walking around your block, you can start somewhere. But action needs to be taken. So don't let that the laziness, the slothness overtake you for your own convenience. Be active, family. I know that's this isn't a thing about like, you know, physical. It's just about being proactive with who we are, with what we can do. We think we can't do a lot of stuff, but we can. You just have to have faith in yourself. Uh, let's go to Titus 3, verses 1 through 7, New King James Version. Titus 3, 1 through 7, and we'll close with this. I know we're in the book of Titus right now for Bible study, so I wanted to throw this one in there. This is a little sneak peek into what you guys are going to get. Titus 3, verses 1 through 7. Titus 3, 1 through 7. And this is, again, so a little pretext. Paul writing to Titus to speak on what to speak to the, the people of Crete. Paul writing to Titus on what to tell the people of Crete. Verse 1, remind them to be subject to elder, to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. Verse 3, for we ourselves were also uh, once fools, disobedient, deceived, uh, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the, ki- when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior towards man appeared, and by wor- not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit to whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should be, uh, we become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Amen. That's, if you don't see it right there, that's almost the whole gospel, just right there. Yeah. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, what he did, his grace, his kindness, pouring it out on all man, and then according to the hope of eternal life. So we know that there's a hope of eternal life. That's the gospel right there. And so what's the key point of this? The gift of salvation is conveniently made available to all through Jesus. He made it easy. Jesus made it easy. Whether we are willing to repent and accept that gift or reject it is on the one who hears the gospel. Just as uh, Pastor L was speaking on Sunday, he brought up what you hear and how you hear. So you are accountable to this gospel because you've heard it. And what was it? Now you have it within you to share, to give to others, because that's exactly what Titus is, uh, or what Paul is writing to Titus. He said, tell them, because in verse four, uh, verse 3, For we ourselves were once foolish, right? That is where we once were. That is the whole point of our testimony. This is what I was. This is what I am now in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's great news. That is good news that we get to share to the people of this world. And it's like I said, it's not going to be convenient. It's not going to be on your time. It's on God's time. You have to decide what you need to do, what changes you need to make. And again, let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Because you'll know right away, I got to stop this. And you'll pump the brakes real fast. You'll hit the e-brake because it's that dire that you stop or change whatever it is that you need to do. And so I'll summarize this. Let's see. Okay, so most of what we will face is, uh, will be inconvenience to us. 
but the reward and the promise of an eternal life from free from sin and judgment outweighs it all. Uh, what Christianity isn't about rules and what we can and can't do, but about the one who has already done it for us through Jesus Christ, living our lives in him and walking out our purpose or walking out our purposes to give him glory and to reconcile his people back to him. Amen. Thank you, family. That is all I have for you right now. I hope that you would let this word, again, what we said earlier, I'm about to receive a timely word, that you would walk in what God has planned and purpose in your life, that you would let, as the song goes, let your light shine and let it shine bright. I love you guys. I hope you received. We are done. (laughs) You think that I'm so loud, I don't even need a mic. Good word, good word. We're going to go ahead and uh, pray and then dismiss. uh, Hug on someone before you leave. Shake someone's hand before you leave. All right, guys? Uh, Be nice. Turn to your neighbor and say, be nice. Right? Be nice to one another. Amen. (laughs) So, Father, we bless you and we thank you for the word, Lord. The word of life, the seed of life that has been dropped in our hearts, Father, that it would produce, Father, after your fruit, after your character, Lord God. It will have faith, love, kindness, Father, gentleness, meekness, perseverance, Lord, the goodness of who you are in our lives, Lord. So we put this word in our hearts that we would not sin against you, Lord God. We heard today, Father, faith. So by hearing faith, Father, we grow. We grow in who you are and who we are, Lord God. So we thank you for what you've done tonight, Lord. Thank you for Pastor Diego, Lord, that you continue to bless this young man, Father, with wisdom and knowledge, Lord, that you would always lead him in righteousness and in truth, Lord. I pray, Father, for his soul, for his family, Lord, for his wife, Lord God, that you continue to bless his house, Lord God. They would continue to grow, Father, in love toward one another and for one another, Lord. I thank you for our church, Turning Point Fellowship. I thank you that they come hungry, Father, thirsting for the truth of Christ Jesus, our Lord. So, Father, I ask that you bless them on their way home. No accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires, Father. Not even a ticket, just a safe passage to and from this place. Father, I pray as they lay their heads down tonight, Father, that they'll rest. Their bodies will rest, their minds will rest, their emotions will rest, Father. They'll wake up tomorrow, Father, refreshed, feeling good and saying, thank God, truly, thank God, it is Friday. So we bless you, we honor you right now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. All right. Hug on somebody.